Hey guys, so we're going to talk about a specific case of the LQR controller that we derived from last class. Um, so in this case, we want to look at the minimum energy controller. And, and by that, we're going to take the, the LQR, um, the LQR cost function subjected to the dynamics and reduce it down to just a minimum energy controller. Um, so why do we want a minimum energy controller? Well, say we have a finite amount of resources that we can utilize to get from to uh, propel our process from the initial condition to the final condition um, so we want to consume the least amount of resources as possible to do that um, so what we can do is we can use this for formulation of the lqr to reduce down the general LQR problem into a minimum energy problem and ensure that this is a, a viable way to do it. Um, so for minimum energy, the problem basically reduces to removing the conditions on the final. Yep, great. I, I recorded this before, but it wasn't synchronizing, so I had to do it again. So we can remove the final cost and we can move this X on the cost to go. Um, and then this will reduce to, let me pull up that, okay. So this will reduce to solving the problem of U in Rm of P, which is equal, gonna be equal to one half times the cost to go from T naught to Tf of U transpose U. Okay, so here we have Essentially, PF is equal to zero, uh, Q is equal to zero, and R is equal to the identity, right? All right, and so we're going to solve this with res uh, subjected to the dynamics, linear dynamics, right? And we can consider the case for varying. And we want to have an initial condition. And then we want to know where, oops, that should not be a derivative there. And then we want to know where we have to go. And then that'll be the final condition there. So now we have a boundary value problem on X and on X, right? All right, and so if we can, if we recall from our discussion on controllability, we talked about the controllability gram and you even had a homework assignment on it. Um, and so we want to make sure that our control, if we're assuming, because we're dealing with an LQR-like controller, that our controller is, uh, that our system is controllable, um, then that implies that our, our controllability gramian is non-singular, right? And so we know that from our previous analysis that the controllability gramian um, coupled with the state transfer, um, state transfer matrices, um, that'll give us a, a controller. So if we use the controllability gramian, and I called that W, T naught, the TF, right? Then we can define our U of t is equal to negative b transpose t times the state transition matrix t naught t up to t and back to that there we go um, times w inverse t naught t f times x naught minus the state transfer matrix I of x times x at tf. All right. And so it turns out that this controller here is exactly the minimum energy controller. All right, and so, but why? 
Okay, so let's let's do a, qu a quick proof to, to show you why. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna suppose we have two controllers. Um, so suppose we have U1 that transfers X from the initial condition to the final condition or yeah, final point. Let's suppose that we have another controller, you're not, which is the proposed uh, minimum energy controller. Okay, so U1 is just an arbitrary controller. U0 is, is this controller right here. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna step through the process of showing that U0 is uh, less than, uh, results, results in uh, uh, less energy consumed than any U1. Okay, so if we recall, that the solution to um, a linear time system uses uh, the state equations. And so we know that X at the final time is equal to the state transfer matrix, right? From, uh, at, from T naught and uh, TF times X naught plus the integral of T naught to TF times the state transfer matrix, T naught to tau, B tau, U tau, D tau, right? All right, so then this will imply that we can call a variable X bar as being equal to the state transfer matrix times T naught TF X, oops, X at T at, at the final time minus the initial time. All right, and then this will be equal to T naught TF. It'll just be equal to the right hand side there uh, times the state transfer matrix T naught tau B tau U tau D tau. All right, so next, consider that both controllers are trying to accomplish the same thing. Are they're supposed to try to transfer X from its initial condition to its final condition. Uh, let's go to the next page. So therefore, we have that the initial condition or the integral from T naught to TF of everything inside the anagram is equal to there should be this should be t not here. So the this should be the same between both controllers, right? Since the goal is the same B should be equivalent. So then this will imply that the integral from T naught to TF of everything inside the integrand, B tau U one tau minus U naught tau D tau is equal to alpha, uh, zero. All right, and so then as a result, the dot, the dot product uh, of this value with any other value is always zero. Um, so in particular, so 
the dot product uh, between this value and any other value is always zero. i.e. we have that alpha transpose times the Gramian times x bar is equal to zero. Okay, so now just an aside, some, some matrix math. Uh, if we do, let's see, let's do this. Let's draw a box around this guy right here. So just as an aside, we can say that X transpose a Y is equal to a transpose X transpose times times Y, right? Okay. So under that under that assumption, well under that uh, that rule, we can take it and it'll. Uh, we can use that rule to do the following. So we get t tran uh, uh, the integral from t naught to t f of u one tau minus u naught tau transpose b transpose tau b transpose you're so needy, Jack. From W T naught T F X bar D top. And this guy is equal to zero. Let me fix this. All right. All right. So then this will this will lead to. So times u not tau d tau. All right, and so this this occurs because if we look above, we can see that um, that this that a portion of this is our minimum time controller, right? As seen as seen above. Um, <laughs> So if we consider the cost of the controller U1, namely if we consider this being the cost, right? The integral of literally the cost function. This guy is equal to not, he's pawing me. Um, all right, let's try again. It's post jack walk, post frozen screen, ready to go. Um, all right, so where were we? We just looked at the integral of the cost of our controller U1, right? And so now from here, what we can do is we can add and subtract zero, basically, um, by adding and subtracting U0. So we add zero on both sides, okay? And then what we can do is we can expand this guy. So we get u tau, uh, the integral to, from zero to tf. And this guy will be u1, u not transpose u1, u not d tau plus t not to tf, u transpose t not, uh, u, u, trans, u not transpose u not d tau plus two, right? And so now this is just taking a portion of this and um, and do just doing the product. So you get U1 U minus U naught transpose times U naught d tau, okay? 
So now as we've shown above, uh, a couple lines higher of this guy, we have this equivalency right here, right? Which is this. So this guy, this guy goes to zero, right? Since we have this equivalency. Um, another, another thing that we can say is that this guy right here on the, on the left is always positive. So this guy is always positive. and non-zero if u not is not equal to, if u1 is not equal to u not, right? Um, hopefully you all can see that. It's basically just taking any, any vector here, uh, transpose any other vector is going to be a positive number. And if u1 is not equal to u not, uh, then it's going to be, uh, non-zero, right? So it's always going to be, it's going to be strictly positive uh, under that assumption. All right, so because, because this guy is always, po is always positive, um, this guy stays and this guy stays, that implies, that implies that TF U1 uh, transpose u1 d tau is always greater than the integral from p naught tf the cost of u naught transpose times u naught d tau so what is this saying this say this says that we have our u naught which is our optimal controller we have our our u1 which is any other controller and the only case where u naught u1 is optimal is when it's equal to u naught. Okay. Otherwise, it's all, otherwise the cost is always greater. So this implies which implies that u naught t is equal to d transpose. This is just the controller that I wrote down before times the state transfer matrix T naught T uh, times the Gramian inverted times uh, of T naught to the final time X naught minus the state transfer matrix times the final condition. And so this guy we just showed is the minimum energy controller, or it has, it is the controller with the guaranteed lowest cost. Enter. I spelled that wrong. Awesome. And then next I'll show you an example.